And this week, I want to talk to you about three aspects of digital photography that we use in our practice. One, case acceptance. Two, professional clinical growth. And three, marketing. We've been misled to believe that dentistry, more specifically the dental business, has to be complicated. Dentistry can be simple and dentistry should be simple. Hey gang, T-Bone here, and this week I'm going to be doing a solo episode with you. And we're going to be talking about what I consider is the most important piece of technology that you can ever implement in your practice. I know you might be thinking CAD CAM, digital impression, CBCT, but really what I'm talking about is digital photography. A digital camera, not intraoral cameras, has been without question the most important thing I put into my practice. And this week I want to talk to you about three aspects of digital photography that we use in our practice. One, case acceptance. Two, professional clinical growth. And three, marketing. Now, for many of us, marketing may be one of the driving forces for it, but I want you to make that number two or number three. So let's get into this week's episode. And I just want everybody to know I do miss Meredith. She is, uh, uh, I don't know what she's doing, but, uh, and for those of you watching uh, on YouTube or watching the social media clips, uh, we're moving our studio from out of my basement uh, to the 3D retreat. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, having a new studio uh, where we can record without uh, interrupting family life and all of that stuff. So I wanted to kind of give everybody an update on that. So you might see a few weeks where we're up and down in terms of the recordings, but know that we love you and we want to continue uh, providing great content. So again, let's get back to this week's episode where we talk about digital photography in the dental office. How are we using it? What are we doing? All of those things. Uh, so let's get started. Number one, and quite frankly, the most important use, in my opinion, of digital photography is for case acceptance. Now, again, look, I'm not that old. I'm 46 years old, but I've been practicing dentistry for 22 years. In fact, when I opened my office, my private startup office, I was 24 years old. And quite frankly, I looked maybe a little bit younger than that at the time. Um, but the challenge I had at that point in time was that I had clinical skills that were pretty advanced for where I was at my time uh, in the profession. And I needed to get patients to say yes to all of this stuff. And I always felt internally or sometimes even got that look from the patient like, are you old enough to know what you're doing? Uh, so what I started doing was I used photography as a way to build value and trust, more trust than anything else. Now, back in 2000, when I started my practice, uh, digital SLR cameras weren't really that readily available or even remotely affordable. So what I actually did then was I would actually use a regular film-based digital camera. There was a Kroger grocery store across the street that would process the film for me in less than an hour. And one of my team members would run over there and drop off the canister. Uh, that's what films used to come in and then pick up the pictures. And we would actually review them with the patient at the, towards the end of their appointment. Now, <clears throat> slowly after that, we were able to move into the digital world and it really started changing the game for us. It allowed us to take photographs and show them to the patient right away and things like that. Now, also remember back in the 2000s, you know, having a second monitor where patients could see what you're doing wasn't really standard at that point in time. We had the 12 o'clock monitor, the patient monitor behind, sorry, the monitor behind the patient. Uh, and so showing patients their pictures wasn't really easy. So we used to print our photographs and kind of show them to them uh, that way. So what I started seeing at this point in time was patients started gaining trust in me. When you started showing them what you're seeing and what you're talking about, and you started letting them do a, what we call a self-diagnosis, you could literally at this point put a picture up or show them a picture of, of, of their teeth, and they'll, they'll be like, is that really my mouth? I didn't realize my teeth looked like that. You know, what can we do about that? And that's really where the conversations start. And, and so to me, one of the most important aspects is this self-diagnosis and case acceptance ap aspect where you put a picture up, you ask a patient if there's anything they don't like, and they just kind of start talking. Or even better, they say, well, you're the doctor, tell me what you think. And that's permission to kind of start talking about the different things that are going on. Now, many of you have uh, probably been to training or read things online where these people are taking 12, 18, so many photographs of every patient. And, you know, I always have tried to keep everything very simple and Kind of streamlined in my practice. Part of it's because I'm not so smart 
and I'm definitely on, on the lazier end. Uh, so what we found was that we started taking six photos of every patient. Now, we will take more photos once we kind of need those photos because the patient expresses interest, but we want to start with six photos. So let me kind of walk you through those six photos that we're taking in our practice. One is a full face photo. Two is a smile photo. Three is a retracted photos with the teeth slightly, slightly apart so you can see the incisal edges. Four is a full arch upper photo in a mirror. Five is a full arch lower photo in a mirror. And six is what I call the hygiene photograph, but that's just the backs of the lower front teeth in a mirror. And what we found with those six photographs is that really we were able to kind of self-diagnose the type of dentistry that we wanted to do. And then when we got into bite issues, when we got into more complex cases, then of course we were able to take more photos as we needed it from there. So those are the six photos. Now, when it comes to case acceptance, I've worked with so many dentists over the years and talked to so many dentists and you know, it blows my mind, but still one of the challenges we see with team members is that they take the photos because you tell them to take the photos, but then they never do anything with the photos. So listen, a photograph is only good if you're actually gonna show it to the patient. Now, how can you show it to the patient? Look, the simplest way <clears throat> is you upload it into your uh, dental practice software, you put it up on a TV screen or a monitor and let your patient see it. The second simplest way is you take the card and you print it out from your camera and you print it out nicely on, on photo paper and then you show it to your patient. For those of you that want to be super fancy and want to overcomplicate this and give you reasons to not get going, you can also even do wireless transfer to an iPad to where you or any type of tablet and your patient can hold the tablet, the photo will show up there and then they can do drawings and everything like that. And quite frankly, even 22 years in, I haven't gone to that level and, and I'd love to, but honestly, What's working is working so well. What's working is scalable and workable for the team members that we hire as we get um, more and more team members or as we have team turnover. I'm super excited today. Can you guys tell? I'm going to slow down a little bit today, okay? So that's kind of, you know, what I want to talk to you about case acceptance. So, so, so important uh, that you ta start taking photographs for case acceptance. And for those of you that are saying, hey, I can do all of this with the intraoral camera? The answer is sure you can, but, but here's the truth. Intraoral cameras show one tooth photos. So if you want to do one tooth dentistry, take one tooth photos. If you want to do quadrant dentistry, take quadrant photos. If you want to start doing more complex, complete dental care, take full arch photos. If you want to do, start doing whole mouth dentistry, start taking whole mouth photos of your patients. It's a simple, simple fact that we've seen and done and proven year over year, time over time. Case acceptance with digital photography, no question, one of the most important things that we started and continue to do in our practice to this date. Now, let's move on to professional clinical growth, and that's becoming a better dentist. Look, we all, for, let me back up. For those of you that are listening to the podcast, you're taking time out of your life to listen to a podcast, listen to me, listen to other podcasts, because you have a drive to be better. You want to be better. That's why I love talking to each of you each week, is because you share a passion that I share to continue to get better in what we do. So photography, a digital camera, unlike an intro camera, allows you to get better at what you do. It allows you to be critical and evaluate your work, to critique yourself, to ask others to critique yourself, to look at things and see things that honestly, that we never see, especially under magnification with the headlight that drowns things out. So I like to be able to evaluate my cases, look back at my cases, see what I could have done better. You know, in the beginning I started with before and afters, and then I started taking some pictures of my preps along the way. I started taking pictures of me doing some of the dentistry. So when I was struggling using a product or using a technique, I could share some photos of that or getting the outcomes I wanted. I could share photos with that with other people and they'd say, hey, have you tried this? Or, hey, I used to see that and I moved to this instrument. I moved to this product and, and that got rid of that. You know, so I, I like to be able to professionally grow by evaluating my cases using photography. Now, as I started getting into more uh, aesthetically based dentistry and more complete care dentistry, my communication with the lab started becoming important. As we started developing a reputation to be able to do cosmetic dentistry, patients came in and they started having higher expectations. 
And that means you have to you have to communicate with your lab better. So for me, the professional cl clinical growth of communicating with the laboratory was amazing. To be able to do posterior crowns that matched, uh, you know, where the shade was correct, the characterization was correct, and instead of just writing A2 on a lab slip, uh, you know, you can actually show them photographs, what type of translucency you have, you know, all these things from a simple photograph, a simple shade tap photograph, a simple, a simple before photograph. All of these things came into play. You know, when I was struggling closing diastemas on cosmetic cases, I would take pictures of my preps and my labs would tell me, hey, you know, if you really want us to close this prep with a nice contour, you might want to prep this a little bit more subgingival. So all of these things started coming about because of lab communication. So becoming a better dentist was a natural progression from the photography. And, and I hopefully what you're starting to see is, is you take the photos so that you can get patients to say yes. And then you take the photos once they say yes, so that you can become a better dentist so that you can do better work. Uh, and then the last thing I want to talk about is really the marketing aspect of taking photographs. And that's kind of coming full circle. You take the photos to get the patients to say yes. You take the photos to become better at what you do. And then the last part of it is you take photos so you can get more patients to actually want to come to your practice. And, and I've always talked about the importance of personal branding. And I think it's an unlooked at and undervalued area of marketing. People buy from people. And people in, in today's world, uh, especially with social media and YouTube and all these different things, People are able to connect with you and connect with you as a person. And if you're not putting yourself out there and sharing with people the type of work you do and your process and letting them take be a peek behind the curtains, you're really not marketing in any type of unique way. You're just another dentist telling people that you do the same thing that every other dentist on your corner does. So for me, the, the photograph started with the before photos, the after photos, being able to show them what we were doing. And then really kind of, it, it started evolving into developing a brand as an quote unquote expert dentist by sharing photos of well, how we close gaps and how we avoid black triangles and how we you know match one tooth to the other tooth when one is dark versus not dark. And, and for me, you know, in the early 2000s, it certainly started as trying to share that with other dentists as I tried to as I tried to establish my career as a speaker and an educator within dentistry. But then once social media kind of picked up and over the last decade, I've taken that and gone to the public because there's this thing called Google where patients start asking questions. Why is this? Why is that? How do I have this? Why does this happen? And, and, and photography and videography, uh, and they kind of go together, is a great way to start showing your patients. How does a CAD CAM machine, how does a milling unit work? How does a single visit crown work? What are the benefits of a single visit crown? How do you make it? How do you choose what material? You know, uh, you know, what is a veneer versus a crown versus a three quarter crown? Why do I have to take away more tooth structure than other times? These are the questions patients are wondering because they've read this and they've heard this online through social media, through Reddit forums, through different places uh, like that. So, you know, part of it's answering the questions and there's no better way to answer questions than to have visual representation of what you're talking about. So hopefully in this quick solo episode, I've been able to share with you just a few of the ways that we're using digital photography in our office to help grow our practice. Again, for those of you uh, that kind of forgot about all the things we talked about, we talked about case acceptance, professional, clinical growth, and personal branding marketing using photography. I hope that this episode helps you want to be a better dentist. Now, speaking of being a better dentist, speaking of getting control of your practice, you know that this podcast is brought to you by 3D Dentist. You know, as the owner of 3D Dentist, as the founder of 3D Dentist, what we have done and what we continue to do at 3D Dentist, quite frankly, is different than any other type of education in dentistry. We have created an immersive experience here at 3D Dentist. From the retreat to our, to our training center in Nashville built into the uh, Sully Sullivan's dental practice, we have a unique approach to dental education. It is not about being stuffy and stuck in a hotel and having people tell you how great they are. Instead, it's the exact opposite. How can we engage? How can we share our failures with you? How can we talk about real world challenges? And so really, I wanna ask for your support for 3D Dentist. 
If you want to jump in to case acceptance and really get your team on board, I'd suggest the 3D Business Bootcamp. It's our case acceptance program, but it's a little bit more than just case acceptance. It's really uh, our overall philosophy on, on how we built our practice and what we focus on. But those of you that want to say, you know what, I want to go all in and really kind of take control of my practice, I'd encourage you to consider and apply for our 3D Mastermind program. And for, the, for those of you that say, hey, you know, I'm pretty happy with where my practice is at. I'd just like to continue to in, in, increase and improve my clinical skills and the procedures I'm providing, we have our clinical growth programs, whether it's dental implants, sleep apnea, orthodontics, sedation, digital dentistry, 3D printing, cosmetics. We have programs that help you improve your clinical skill set. And then we also have, of course, as I mentioned, the business programs to help you be happy and take control of your practice. So again, visit 3D-dentists.com or you could even visit tbonespeaks.com. Uh, DM me on social media, contact us, let us know how we can help you. We're looking forward to making your dentistry and your practice the best it can be. Have a great day and I'll see you next week.